This is Joe Landon. Welcome to Trifern Studio. Today we're going to be working on a hollow form vessel. We're working on fiddleback maple and first thing is to basically get this thing round and we're going to do that between centers because in my opinion that's the safest way to work. On this end will actually be the top of the vessel. These new tools I got from Paolo Marin from Glazer High Tech are just awesome. They, they really hold the edge well. They've got a nice deep groove to them. See how nice and clean this, these new tools cut? The white U grooves in this tool are really nice. When you're cutting, it, it really allows the material to fly off there and not get hung up. We're working with the Fibonacci curve or the golden mean. You can see how that's really starting to get a decent shape. We'll go ahead and continue cutting the tenon here. Too many times people get hung up on these expensive exotic woods. When you're first starting out especially, just get whatever you can and just practice on your form and don't get hung up on, I need to save as much of this wood as possible. Okay, let's recap where we're at here. We've started with a chunk of maple, turned between centers. We did some basic shaping. This is gonna be the, the top of the vessel, the opening. We've cut a tenon down here that we're gonna mount into a four chuck jaw. We've left some girth down here so that we've got some weight to keep it well balanced once we reverse chuck it. Okay, now that we've reverse chucked it with um, the four jaws chucks, it's a little bit out of balance. I could sit there and mess with it and, and try to get it mounted into that chuck good. It's not going anywhere, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fire it up and go ahead and get it back into balance real quick. And this is another thing I'm talking about. Don't worry about wasting wood, because in my mind, you're not really wasting wood. You're making a piece of art. So don't get hung up on that wood. Another reason not to buy that expensive exotic woods unless you absolutely have a disposable income. And if that's the case, go ahead and just, I'll give you my address later and you can just send me a check instead and we'll both be happy. And here again, we're just practicing our hero cut so that we're going from start to finish all the way out to the end, leveling off the end, which is gonna be the opening here. I typically like to get this top part of the vessel the way I want it, and then we'll move on to the finishing shape on the lower part. Here's where we're at. We basically got a nice fair curve here on the top portion of the vessel. We're going to go ahead and, and round this back down to get a nice, nice curve from the lip all the way down to the foot. We're going to leave a little bit of heft down here. We're going to basically get rid of this flat spot here so we get a nice curve. I'm pretty happy with the basic overall shape, so we'll go ahead and blend this into the back part of it, and then we'll come back in and I'll show you how to do a shear scut with this 5 8 inch bowl gouge from Glazer High Tech. When I'm making the cuts, I'm not watching my tool do the cutting because then I kind of get enthralled with that and I kind of get lost in it. I'm looking at the outline at the top of the vessel so that I can see what the form's doing up there. One good tip is to try to get your walls nice and white. It kind of helps you see the shadow as you're cutting. It helps you pick that out a little bit better. Spin, baby. I've got this nice expensive tool that a friend of mine made, this Fibonacci gauge or the golden mean gauge. No matter where I move this, it's going to give me one third, two thirds. Put this where the lip is and approximately where the base is going to be and this is where the high spot needs to be. So I've, I'm missing that curve a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this high spot, blend the top to the bottom so that we've got the proper curve, and then we'll come back in and shear scrape so that we can clean up all the edges. I'm going to be hollowing with the 5 8 inch tool, so what I like to do is have my opening right around an inch 
So we'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit. And we're just taking some light cuts. We're not doing any major shaping right now. We're just basically blending things together. Because we're, we're doing just the final finishing cuts right now. This is my sanding. We're just taking ever so light cuts here and just doing the final blending and removing as much of the tool marks as what we can. Um, what I'll do at this stage is go 150, 180, 220 on the grid on sandpaper. And I like to do that now when we've got a nice hefty thing rather than thin walls. So we'll go ahead and do that now. If you notice, I've put my tailstock back up. I've put a Jacobs chuck in it and I've mounted a drill in there. I'm just going to get the hole started and then I will finish up drilling for depth with the handheld drill. Next to my Fibonacci curve, this is my other nice tool that I have. You can see it's a select tool. It's basically just a two by two piece of wood that's been drilled. It's got a 3 8 inch drill bit mounted in it. We're basically just going to eyeball this, measure it for the depth that we want, mark it with a piece of tape, and then double check that that's the depth that we want. And notice that we've got all this wood down here, so it's not real critical but this will get you close enough. Nothing too high tech here, but it's important that we get this initial pilot hole straight and to the proper depth. We're using a Trent Bosch 5 8 inch bar here with a little high speed steel cutting tip. Make sure you keep your tip nice and sharp and we're just gonna go where we started with that one inch opening and we're just gonna start opening it up, starting at the center where we started that pilot hole and just open it up. You'll notice I've got this tool rest about a couple of inches away from the vessel. Now I'm going to grab the tool like this and I'm going to wrap my fingers keeping them on this side of the tool rest. I don't want to put my fingers here and start working because if I get a catch, I'm going to break some fingers. So for safety reasons, keep your fingers pulled back, please. I'm just practicing my hero cuts on the inside this time, pretending and watching the outside of the vessel as my tool moves on the inside of the vessel, imagining where the tool is practice this hero cut every single time you do it on the inside until you get closer and closer to the final cut, which by then you should have good movement and good practice. Now we're switching over to the shepherd's hook tool. This allows me to get into the opening and up around the shoulder nice and tight. When you start getting the walls pretty well thinned down a little bit and you reach in there and you fill it, then you move on to the calipers and you're reaching in there and what I'm looking at is down here and that shows me how thick the walls of the vessel are. If you're going to be doing some carving, that's about right. If you're leaving it as is, that's probably just a little bit thick. Now we're going to take off this extra wood that we left down there and cut a nice foot on it. So I just want to measure where we're at for depth on the inside so that the outside is longer than the inside. So that gives me an idea that this is where the bottom of the foot's going to be. Okay, so I'm going to need to be in there. Crack 
crucial part here, this is where most of you stop. You just run this angle, you've got this nice flowing curve all the way down and then you just run it right down. When you do that and you set the vessel upright, it appears that it's growing right out of whatever surface that it's on and you want to give it a little bit of lift. So what we're going to do is come in here and just tuck in the corner. Open it up a little more with the parting tool. The parting tool is going in at a slight angle so that I'm basically cutting a little bit of a foot here right now. You don't want to just cut that straight in because then when the wood moves a little bit, it's going to rock a little bit. So we're cutting in at a slight angle. Do one last little tuck. So that's basically it. We'll go ahead and do the finished sanding on this and then we'll cut it off and that will be the vessel. Here we have the finished piece as it came off the lathe. What we'll do now is we'll go in and do any final hand sanding, inspect it real close by eye, and then we'll be ready to apply the finish. What we're gonna do on this with a nice fiddleback maple is we're gonna apply layers of dyes. We'll cover that in the next vlog.